Hello, I'm Jacob and you are watching the Prepper's Bunker Outdoors. What you see before you today is the Shadow Tech Python. Um, this thing is a absolute beast and I am very excited to, uh, to get down to business with it. Now before I get into this too much, um, this channel is not monetized on YouTube. It is funded completely through sales on my website, beachandtactical.com, my Patreon, and my Amazon store. Links to those will be in the description box below. So I learned about Shadow Tech years ago at a Columbus Preppers convention. And at the time, they were using 1095. So although I was interested in their products, um, I wasn't super interested. I noticed recently that they were using 8670. This is a modified 1070 steel that is really underutilized, insanely tough, and that I'm really excited about. And they really caught my attention with it. And so I challenged Shadow Tech. I said, you should send me this knife so that I can pit it up against the Becker BK9 and the SE Hunglis 2 and they are clearly confident in their product because they said, okay, let's do it. So those, these knives are all going to go to the table of destruction. Now, what I love about being able to show you guys this knife <clears throat> is one of the things that I often hear as a comment on this channel is that people like this channel because I show weird, different, or off the beaten path knives. So while most channels are looking for knives that are gonna give them the most views, I'm looking for new companies and new products to show you that you might like, and looking for companies that deserve a little bit more exposure. And I think Shadow Tech is one of those companies. What I'm gonna do real quick, overlaid on the screen, I'm gonna put the specs and the MSRP of this knife up on the screen right now but it is a quarter inch thick. Like I mentioned, it's 8670. This guy's got micarta handles. This is a thick daddy, two C's, two K's, uh, hollow ground, and uh, it comes with a Kydex sheath. This was a special one that they did up for me. Um, and uh, America. Uh, with the sheath, um, it's pretty darn good. It doesn't have the custom snap that I've become accustomed to with really premium Kydex. But for a production sheath, um, retention is quite good. There's no rattle. Now, all in all, it's, it's really, it's a good serviceable sheath. I think that not many people would be replacing this sheath with an aftermarket one. Um, this is a clip that they use a lot uh, for putting it on your belt and you can mount it any which way on here for however you want to carry this knife, which is pretty nice. And they also were uh, kind enough to include this molly attachment here. So let's get a little bit of the meat and potatoes. Uh, it's about an eight inch blade, quarter inch thick, obviously hollow ground. I've already said all that stuff. The edge is pretty darn straight, but is not exactly straight. And it is rather thick. We will see in the long run if that affects sharpening with the edge straightness, but it's pretty darn good. It's not too bad. And uh, the edge thickness, being that it's 8670, I think it will still be easy to sharpen, but uh, what, what that brings uh, to the front here is, even though this knife is hollow ground, it should literally be indestructible. This could be the toughest knife that I own. And we will find out. I'm going to put a hurting on this thing. And we'll find out just how tough it is. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think it'll break. And the tip... It'll be really hard for me to focus on this, I'm sure. The... Yeah. Doggone it. Come on. The tip is fairly fine, actually. Which is nice. Uh, not so fine that I think that it'll be weak. But fine enough to do some work. Uh, the handle, like the rest of the knife, is very thick. Uh, it's a two-position handle, so you've got a uh, good handle here for chopping. You can choke up a little bit. You've got a little bit of jimping, a little bit of recessed jimping. It's not too aggressive. Um, it is a little bit aggressive. It is deep. We'll see how that holds up. 
By the way, you will be hearing Benjamin in the background because Benjamin's doing what Benjamins do. Uh, we've got a lanyard hole down here with the pinky guard. Uh, I'll have to see if this bothers my pinky during chopping. I'll let you guys know. I've dealt with pinky fatigue before um, in designs like this and I've also gotten used to designs like this where it didn't bother me anymore. So we're just going to have to see. Maybe it could be a good thing. Maybe it could, for a woods blade, be a less good thing. But it certainly will be a secure thing. So all in all, first impressions of this knife, if I'm going to tell you how I think that this whole review process is going to go, I don't think I'll ever break this knife. I don't think that I will be able to. I think that it's going to be pretty easy to sharpen, at least to an acceptable level. And I think this is going to be a phenomenal woods carry uh, setup here. Um, due to its weight, it's likely going to be best set up as a pack knife or on a baldric sling. We'll have to see how that goes. But uh, you have all of the components to a really solid multi-use knife. The clip is not so severe that it makes the tip overly uh, uh, weak, I don't think, at this point. We've got a nice long belly. We should have a pretty good sweet spot for a knife this size. Should chop decently. Um, you know, it is what people would consider a large knife. It will be considered a chopper, but it's still rather short for being a chopper. But for its size, I think it'll do well. We'll find out for sure when we pit it up against the Hungless 2 and the BK9. And, uh, and will it be comfortable for chopping and doing tasks? Um, the one thing that I'm guessing I probably won't like about the pinky guard is when I'm wanting to chop and choke down to two or one fingers, I think it's going to make it a little bit more awkward that way. But uh, maybe that won't even be necessary. We'll just have to see how she acts when we get her into the woods. So, um, you know, definitely check Shadow Tech out. I'm sure I already mentioned this, but they're made in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, they make some really interesting and unique stuff. And if you can't tell by how I operate this channel, I'm into unique stuff. So what I'm going to do, um, in the description box below, I'll put links to where you can find Shadow Tech knives. And uh, below that will be links to how you can support this channel. Let me know what you think about the knife, the design, and what they do in the comment section below. Uh, I look forward to talking to you, and I hope that you have a blessed day.